someone just started the dryer. I don't know if you guys can hear that. This is the joy of making YouTube videos, living with a bunch of roommates. All right, hopefully you guys can hear that. Anyways, sorry for the long delay of videos. I haven't been uploading as recently. I'm trying to learn a new editing software to make the quality of these videos much better than they already are. So bear with me. Hopefully the pace of videos coming out will increase and the quality will also be much better. But I wanted to do a video today showing you how to replace the sky in any photo you have in like two seconds. It is so easy and like myself, I was really intimidated to start jumping into Lightroom or Photoshop. I was intimidated to start jumping into Photoshop. I just didn't really know where to start and I thought it was gonna be really hard and complicated, but I'm here to show you how easy it is to do something like replace a sky in a photo it literally takes like 10 seconds so here i have a photo that has a really basic bland sky it's pretty much all white but the environment and landscape is pretty dope so i'm going to show you how to switch the sky in this photo so we're going to go ahead and go up to edit and come down to sky replacement you're already thinking, wow, this is easy. It's going to then just start throwing a sky on the background and just like that, there's a freaking sky, like that easy. But if we go ahead and click this little tab, Photoshop has a bunch of different skies that we can choose from. We have blue skies, spectacular, and you can go ahead and just click a sky and it'll take a few seconds and Photoshop will just throw it on there. When it comes to choosing a sky, I think certain skies, I don't think, I know, certain skies go better with certain photos. Like this one looks pretty good and realistic, I think. Here's another one. I think this one looks the best and looks the most natural with this photo. But some of them like this one, for example, I don't think works very well because clearly in this photo, you can tell that the sun is way off in the distance and setting and the sky is more purplish pink and the rocks have a yellow light on them. Now you can obviously fix that and change it, but I like to match the photo with the sky as best as I can. So you have a bunch of different options, but you can also upload your own photos that you've taken of skies and apply them yourselves. So that's what I like doing the most, but you do have a huge variety of really awesome skies that Lightroom provides for you. Now Lightroom makes this super easy and there's some people out there who thinks that this is cheating. I don't really think it's cheating, but I do completely understand the idea of taking a picture somewhere that is totally untouched by Photoshop and it's how it was when you shot it. I do post lots of photos like that and take lots of photos like that but once in a while I will replace the sky to give it a little extra punch that it's missing for example this one it was just too boring in my opinion there's too much negative space so throwing a nice sky in there can totally complete a photo and make it amazing taking it from a good photo to a great photo so once you have the sky that you want we can simply go back into here and we have all these different bars and things we can do to edit the sky and make it look more natural also a little tip the less things you have projecting into the sky the harder time photoshop is going to have trying to you know replace the sky so when you have really solid breaks from your actual landscape or anything or your subject in the sky it's going to be much easier for photoshop to replace that sky so here we have different things we can do to adjust our sky as we can do we're shifting the edge and you can see it's kind of bleeding into the rocks. So we want to keep it more on this side, but if we take it to the other side, it kind of fades. The sky fades more the closer it is to the rock. So I'm going to keep that somewhere in the middle where it was before. Then we have fade edge, which basically, like it says, fades the edge, but I'm going to keep that up at 100% and just keep it nice and sharp along the rocks. And then we have brightness where you can match the brightness of your photo in case your environment is really dark and then you have a super bright crazy sky. This is going to help it look more natural and match your environment a lot more. And then we have temperature, which also really helps. Like I said, those other skies, how I said they didn't really work because the lighting didn't match. In some scenarios, you can change the temperature and match it quite nicely. And when you edit a photo in Lightroom, you can have in mind that you're going to put this in Photoshop after and change the sky and make sure you're editing it appropriately 
to match the colors. So like I said, we have the temperature, we can make the sky a bit more cooler, or we can make it a lot warmer. I think I want it somewhere in there, there we go. I think these clouds really look really good with these rocks and the warm sun on them. I think it just really matches nicely. And then finally we have scale. So you can change the scale of your sky and it will make it bigger or smaller. So as you can see, it's just a photo behind your subject and landscape and everything like that. So you can just throw your own photos in here, but not only can you scale it, you can drag it around. So let's get this back to a good size. There we go. And then drag it to where we want. Make sure those mountains are hidden. In this photo, the sky, the clouds are just kind of thrown up there in the sky, but if you have a photo that is a really long photo and you can see really far off into the distance, you're gonna to wanna to choose some clouds that roll continuously off into the distance. That's gonna look the best. Something like this where clouds are just thrown up in the skies or some of the other ones. You're not gonna to wanna to just throw some clouds up in the sky like this. This looks pretty awful. This looks like a, a painting on Andy's wall in Toy Story. So you don't want something like that. You wanna make sure the clouds move with the rest of the photo, if that makes sense. You want the clouds to roll into the distance. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at one more photo here and we're gonna go ahead and go into edit sky replacement and this is a photo I've wanted to replace the sky for a long long time. I really like this photo. It's a cool shot of these small rivers and you know geysers going through Yellowstone National Park but the sky is just white. It was really smoky out there, so I wanna go ahead and replace the sky on this one. So I don't think I'm gonna go with a blue sky, maybe, I don't know. I'm gonna go through and look at the ones I like. See, we got a problem here. We have this mountain in the background. Can I remove that? No, we have a mountain in the background, and this mountain in the background is so foggy and it was so far from the distance, it just does not match with the sky at all. Hopefully we can find a sky that works well with it. I might have to use one of my own. So for this one, I'm definitely going to want to take the shift edge down quite a bit because we have those those mountains off in the distance that are so foggy and hazy. Definitely gonna to want to bring that down so it blends much better into the photo. All right, and there you go. I think that's as good as I'm gonna get it for now. But I hope this video helped a lot, and if you learned something new, please drop a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.